Hello student, I am your deputy ma'am. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic. Now before starting this, let's see two pictures and try to find out the similarities of the pictures. Okay, so let's see the first one and the second one. Now try to find out the similarities okay okay now the similarity is that in both cases the water supplying system of the houses are depicted or are shown okay and if we consider the components of the water supplying system of the houses, then we can see that there should be a pump, the water, which is the medium, and the pipelines. Okay, now these are the three main components which are important for the water supply in the houses. Okay. Now, do you think uh, this type of uh, supplying system are also present in case of living organisms? Yes. This supplying system is also present because the supplying system is very important for the supplying of nutrients, the gases, the hormones and other essential things to each and every cell of our body. And this supplying system is known as the circulatory system. Now, if we consider the components of the circulatory system, then we can found that there is also a pump which is known as heart okay and the medium here that is the blood and the next one the pipelines and these pipelines are actually the blood vessels the artery and the vein so the components of our circulatory system is the heart, blood, and the blood vessels. Okay. Now, what is heart? Heart is a pumping organ of our body. Now, it's continuously pump the blood throughout the whole body for supplying the essential nutrients, the respiratory gases, the hormones and the excretory materials to its specific organ that means kidney and heart always follow a rhythm that means it contraction and relaxation is a rhythmic contraction and relaxation okay and this contraction or relaxation mode is autonomy that means it's controlled by our nervous system okay and the special type of muscle that is present in the heart is the cardiac muscle and if we see the structure of the heart, then we can found that there are four chambers, two atrium and two ventricles or to the upper chamber and to lower chamber. Okay. And this heart is present in our chest cavity on the thoracic cavity in between two lungs okay and this heart is protected by the ribs now 
if we see the cross section of the heart then we can found that there are four chamber i have already told it the first one this is the right atrium this is the left atrium this is right ventricle and this is left ventricle now see the atrium and ventricles are the chambers of the heart but there are some differences what are they now see here the wall of the ventricles these are the walls of the ventricles now these walls of the ventricles are much more thicker than the wall of the atrium and thus it gives a high pressure on the blood okay and these atrium are known as the receiving chamber and the ventricles are known as the supplying chambers okay now see here in the right atria the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava now these vena cava are the main veins in our body that carries all the deoxygenated or high carbon dioxide containing blood from all parts of our body to the right atrium okay now in case of superior one it carries the deoxygenated blood from the upper part of our body and the inferior one that carries the blood deoxygenated blood from the lower part of our body okay Let's see here there are some valves in between the right atrium and the right ventricle now this one now this valve is known as tricuspid valve okay now these valves are very important because it maintains the one way flow of the blood from the atrium to the ventricle okay now the next one if we consider the left atrium then we can found that the pulmonary veins the pulmonary veins are attached to the left atrium and these pulmonary veins actually carries the oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart and here also another valve is present in between the left atrium and the left ventricle and this valve is known as the bicuspid valve and it's also maintain the flow of one way flow of blood from the left atrium to the left ventricle okay now after receiving the deoxygenated blood from the right atrium the right ventricle ejected into the pulmonary this one pulmonary artery now this pulmonary artery deliver the deoxygenated blood to the lungs for its gaseous exchange whereas the left one the left ventricle which it receives the oxygenated blood from the 
atrium left atrium ejects the blood to the aorta our main artery in our body so this aorta then delivered the oxygenated blood to all parts of our body okay now there are another valve known as semi lunar valve this semi lunar valve is present in between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery or at the base of the pulmonary artery it's also control the one way flow of blood or deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs okay and this one another seminal valve which is known as aortic seminal valve is present at the base of the aorta so it's also control the one way flow of oxygenated blood from the left ventricle to the body okay now this is all about the internal structure of the heart and another thing is that this right hand side of the heart and the left hand side of the heart are separated from each other by the interventricular septum interventricular septum so there is no chance of mixing on the deoxygenated and oxygenated blood so the right hand side of our heart carries the deoxygenated blood and the left hand side of our heart carries the oxygenated okay now next one the blood vessels so if we um see there are three types of blood vessels one is artery another is vein and another is the capillary now start with artery so artery is the blood vessels that originates from the heart and it carries the blood from the heart to the body parts whereas vein which arises from the body parts and carries the deoxygenated blood or the blood containing low amount of oxygen and the direction is that from the all parts of our body to the heart and if we compare the artery and veins internal structure then we can see that here see this this whole portion is actually the wall of the blood vessels is the wall of the artery and this is the wall of the vein now see the diameter of the wall of artery and vein now it's very clear that in case of artery the wall is very thick and in case of vein the wall is very thin in comparison to artery and that's why the space of the cavity is the space and here the space now you can easily understand in case of artery the cavity of the space is narrow and in case of vein it is larger okay so the blood which is flowing in through the artery 
has the high pressure and the vein has the low pressure and another one see this structure this v shape structure now this v shape structure is known as the valve now vein carries the valve whereas artery is devoid of valve and it's also control the flow or speed of the blood flow through the blood vessels and that's why the vein has um, in, inside the vein the blood flows in the low speed whereas in the artery it's flow in a high speed so this is the basic difference between the artery and the vein but what's about the capillary now see here capillary is a region where the artery and the vein make a network and it's possible when the blood vessel reach the tissue on the cells so capillary is the network of artery and vein at the one side it carries the artery where the speed of blood or the pressure of blood is high and uh, another side is the vein where the speed or the um, pressure of the blood is low okay now the next one is the blood our body fluid now all of you know that our color of the blood is red and this red color is because of the presence of rbc and presence of iron inside the hemoglobin molecule now if we consider or if we want to see the components of the blood then we can see there are three parts one is plasma which is the watery part and another is the part of red blood cells and another is the platelets and the white blood cell now this is the cellular part of the blood and this one is the watery part of the blood now inside the plasma the main thing is the water and beside the water there is ions proteins nutrients waste materials and the gases respiratory gases and in the cellular part the main is the rbc and other two are wbc and the platelets see here the first one is the rbc or erythrocytes and it is important for the transportation of oxygen and the carbon dioxide because it carries the hemoglobin molecule and these hemoglobin molecules are actually important for the carrying of oxygen and the carbon dioxide molecules and the next one is the leukocytes or wbc white blood cell and there are several types of wbc basophil neutrophil eosinophil lymphocyte and the monocyte and all of these cells are involved in the defense or immunity of our body okay and the last one is the platelets now these blood cells are important for the clotting of the blood now 
this is all about our components of our circulatory system thank you